Thanks for joining us. We're really excited to uh, be talking on this complex topic. Dustin and I, we're kind of nerds on this stuff, so we're always talking about it. Um, so before we get in, uh, Dustin, just want to check in. It's rainy here at the office. How, how's your day going so far? It's not too bad. It's, uh, uh, yeah, the weather could always be a little bit better, but hey, that's, that's spring in Maine. Cinco de Mayo, at least. And we, we actually have a member of our team that's going to be on Jeopardy tonight. So we're pretty excited uh, to be able to see that. Yeah. Um, so just some, some housekeeping things that we wanted to just talk about. We say this at the beginning of every, every webinar we do. Uh, I know we have some salespeople on here and you know, they can be not you know, notoriously distracted, myself included. So you know, turn off cell phones, turn off Facebook. We encourage you to take notes. We've got some, some awesome information that we're gonna be giving out in this webinar. So feel free to take notes and also feel free to ask questions. You might see me look at my phone from time to time. I'm just trying to check if there are any comments. Um, but before we begin, we kind of, we, we want to do, you know, these, this color of green, yellow, red, let us know where you're at, you know, green, are you well versed in website development, yellow, somewhat familiar, but you're here to pick up on some of the best uh, practices, red, I'm a newbie, I know nothing about this. Um, so put that in the chat, just so I know uh, where, where you're at, where your starting point is. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, meeting with us today, everybody. Um, you know, what we're going to cover in today's webinar is uh, these three items right here. So we're going to go through, you know, why optim optimizing for conversions matter uh, to you and your organization. Um, why, uh, you know, some of our own website conversion best practices that me and Peter have developed over the years. And of course, how to track those conversions. So uh, you know exactly where you're spending your money and getting the most bang for your buck. Um, you know, today's speakers is uh, myself, uh, Dustin Bailey. I'm the creative director uh, in charge of operations here at Anania Bailey. Um, I am also the main contact for our clients. So uh, if any of our clients are on here today, you, you certainly know me. And joined today with me is uh, Peter Anania, the man himself, uh, president and owner of uh, Anania Bailey. And he it really is the um, driving force that develops the relationships and is in charge of our uh, our sales here. Um, uh, and, and just one thing that I like to to note, you know, one of the reasons why we are doing this webinar series is uh, because Peter has ten plus years of experience in web design and development that he really wants to share, and that's why we're here today. And Dustin, you're 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 not new to this as well. I mean, you've, you're constantly teaching me stuff and there's a lot of stuff we're going to talk about that Dustin really is the guru. Feel free to ask any questions during this. Feel free to email us if you have any questions after. We're here to really empower you, here to empower marketing managers, PR professionals, business owners. Well, whether you work with us or not, we're here to empower you. So do not hesitate uh, to reach out to us. So Dustin, I think what we're going to jump into next is go over a couple of scenarios that we've, we've come up with here just to kind of paint a picture of why, you know, conversion is important. So we have two scenarios. The numbers are made to make this easy. So let's kind of go through them. So think of this as like a one month of website visitors for both these scenarios. And in both instances, we have 1000 unique visitors, but the difference is that uh, one client has a 1% conversion and one client has a 10% conversion. Let's think of these as two competitors. Maybe they're two uh, landscape companies and the average profit per client is a hundred dollars. So in scenario one, uh, that, that at the 1% conversion rate, that individual is only getting 10 customer leads per month, generating about a thousand dollars in profit. And, and if we increase that conversion rate, 10, uh, 10 fold, 10 X to 10%, um, we get a hundred new customer leads and profit of 10,000. So these things that we're talking about are extremely important to your website. It, it's the foundation of your marketing program and having an optimized for conversions is, is so, uh, so important. And um, we want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the, the, the problems, uh, the, the major problem you're facing if you, if you do not act and you do not optimize your website, website for conversion. And then, you know, what, what does success look like? I'm not going to spend too much time on, on these, but we kind of, we kind of want to set, uh, set, you know, what we're talking about here and what the impact uh, can be on, on what we're doing. So Dustin, I know uh, we talked about these before. 
big investment in marketing. So sometimes for certain companies, marketing is their biggest investment. And and your website is a foundation of that marketing program. So you're investing all this money. Maybe it's, maybe you have a large traditional media buy campaign. Maybe you have a large social media presence. Maybe you're spending a lot of money uh, on some great videos. So you're spending all this money. You need a place to capture all all the leads and, and, and the impact from this. So um, we like to, we just want to point out that you're, you're certainly making a big investment in your marketing. Dustin, here's a scenario that we see as well. Websites with a lot of traffic, but not a lot of conversions. And, yeah. and this might be in the service industry. Uh, maybe, you know, we keep saying landscape or maybe HVAC, uh, maybe a mattress company. Um, you're getting a lot of hits to your website, but you know, very small conversion. So that is often a problem um, that we want to optimize your website to solve. And then low ROI or low return on investment ROI. We want to make sure that your marketing efforts are having a high return on investment. And again, I keep saying your website's the foundation for this, but it's certainly true, isn't it, Dustin? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about what success looks like just to kind of paint a picture here. So success looks like consistently converting leads into clients, um, a website that's able to do that. And then making sure that your schedule, your calendar, um, you know, whether that, you know, if you're a service company, you know, maybe that's certain number of quotes that you're doing, or if you have a uh, sell a product, you know, you're constantly turning through your inventory. So um, just making sure that you're, you're, you're fully scheduled. Um, and then just, we want to see momentum and consistent growth over time. Um, and that's what, you know, optimi optimizing for websites conversions definitely does. Indeed. And, you know, when we're talking about, you know, what does success look like? You know, you really need to set yourself up uh, for what your goals are and how your website is going to achieve those. So here are a couple of goals. Uh, sort of at a high level that are good to keep in mind and think about, you know, is my website doing this, you know, for my company, my organization, myself. Um, the real big one that we like to see, and I think that that sort of ties into the traffic aspect is, you know, who is your target audience? Really defining who is going on your website, who is the user, you know, how are they going to be going through page to page? What does their journey look like? And are you making sure that you are accommodating that type of person that jumps onto your site? You know, the, the, you know, depending on your industry, like if you are a, uh, if you are like an optometrist office and you have patients, you have a very different uh, target audience than if you are like a commercial construction company who um, is, you know, who has a very specific individual that they are going to have on their site reviewing them uh, looking over their branding and messaging. Um, so defining your target audience is really a best place to start to, and, and to really implement your goals from there. Um, you know, and then after that, you have to really think about what are your goals on a high level? Are you trying to really create brand awareness? Are you trying to increase sales? Are you trying to uh, get more newsletter signups or webinar signups, or are you, you know, are you constantly looking for recruitment and you need people to apply to a job on your site or go off to a third party like Indeed, but you know, be able to have that as part of your site to bridge that connection um, for that type of user that's going to be on there. Um, so you know, when we start talking about that, you know, you have to think about what are the specific goals for your products or your services or your intentions. You know, what are you promoting? When are you promoting it? Um, there are a lot of different seasonal businesses, or uh, you know, or you know, there's there's different uh, uh, things that come in waves depending on your your industry or your organization or your your service. And it's good to know like um, how your website is made to accommodate you know what you're promoting and when you're promoting it and how people are uh interacting with it so you have to think sometimes all the way down to a very granular level of your website and ask you know are these kind of things working for my services and or products and then you know as a last real thing to uh, size up your site uh, and see where you're at i know we have our scale green yellow red um you know it's good to take 
that kind of philosophy, look at your website and say, all right, what's working for us right now? What, you know, what is our website doing for us that, uh, that we want to keep, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But the parts that are, uh, that, that aren't actually working for you or your organization, um, you know, you're here to think about what's the best practices to help fix those. Dustin, when I was putting together this slide, you know, I have the, the on the left, you have an, a, a great kickoff meeting structure. We build websites where you, you, you discover this, a lot of this stuff with clients. Um, and, you know, I, I'm just always amazed by the, the strategies that Dustin came, comes up with. And I think we should make that available. So if anyone wants that questionnaire, shoot Dustin or myself uh, an email and we'll make that available. And maybe that's probably a, actually a topic for a video podcast later on as well. Yep. We actually do. I've just developed our new self audit. So that, uh, that's actually a great hand up, um, uh, call out to that. Cause we, we, we do have one uh, available for people that we can start sending out to. So let me give you a bit of a journey here. Um, so this is roughly what the lead conversion uh, looks like through a website. This is sort of the roadmap here. So just on a very high level, you get, you get traffic to your website from sources. So whether it's from social or paid, social media advertising, Google search, uh, Google ads, YouTube, etc. All these different sources uh, bring people to your website. There's one way or another they arrive here. Once they arrive here, you know, I'll be going through all these uh, different components of what will make it effective or not effective. Um, but you basically, you know, when you have somebody go onto your website, you want them to start, you know, exploring your site and making decisions. So as they go through the site, you want to make sure that they have opportunities to possibly call you or email you or submit a form so you can start having those conversations, start looking over the leads that you have generated um, for the people that have made an action to reach out to you. And then, you know, from those leads really can uh, uh, determine if they're qualified to be um, the right fit, whether it's for a, a service, a product, or, or, you know, et cetera, depending on what your industry is. Yeah, Dustin, I, I love that graphic. And I think one thing that it makes me think of that we'll go into a little bit more as well is, you know, Dustin, this graphic is great because it shows you how they'll uh, actually, you know, call or email or submit a form. But I love those X's too, because that's where it's really up to the client, right? And up to the lead nurturing, lead automation. And and exactly. to me, when I see this graph, I think, hey, it's just as important to follow up as well. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think one thing that I would say, and I think it deserves its own, uh, its own little webinar itself, um, is really discussing about the, uh, your part of the process um, for lead conversion and, you know, what you need to, you know, what, what kind of handoff you need to have from your own marketing. And if anyone has any questions, please put, put them in chat. I think we have a quiet audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Feel free. I know we're going to go. We, we won't, we won't bite. Yeah. Um, so uh, to sort of start off with, um, you know, we're talking about the best practices for your website. Uh, me and Peter both agree that the most important thing to start off with is your branding and messaging. This matters so much because um, you, you know, you, everyone's been on that site that's been out of date. It feels like it's from the nineties. It's based on HTML. It, you know, you get a real feeling that it's, it, it's a form of neglect. People have neglected their own brand when you go onto a website like that. So, you know, it's really important to not, to make sure that not only is your website designed for modern times, but it's also picking up some of the best practices of branding and messaging right off the bat. A good example that we have right here um, is a website that we just completed uh, for Seabreeze Property Services. This unique site um, was designed basically as two sites in one. So instead of having a residential site and a commercial site, we, we developed a single site that had sort of this nice little toggle at the top. So if you are a homeowner and you are looking for landscaping services, you can go through the 
uh, go through the different um, uh, pages and services and all all of the little points uh, contact points throughout the site when you're on the residential end are for homeowners and homeowners only. If you are a uh, home uh, uh, an HOA uh, representative or uh, or you're uh, like a property man uh, manager for a large campus, um, you know, and you're looking for something for for your commercial property, then there's a whole other side of the of the website built just for you. And it has all the kind of messaging and contact points that you would need as uh, as that user as well. So this site is really maintaining one solid brand, but creating two different messaging paths. So you're never on a page and think that this is you know this isn't you know for me it's not fitting what I need to know. Um, and this helps create a great environment for them to build both their residential and their commercial side of their business. Dustin, and I love this because it's, you know, you're going to talk about some of the, the best practices, the kind of low hanging fruit, almost like the hacks, but this is at a much higher level. Yeah. And what you're saying is if a user doesn't self identify, if they land on a website and it feels too commercial, you know, if I'm on, uh, let's use an example here locally, the found the four side and I land on a website and it feels commercial, I'm not going to fill out a form because I'm, I'm not. I don't think they're, they're offer the service that I'm looking for. So, I mean, that's, I think so important with branding and messaging, just having the user self identified. It's something that it's, it's definitely left out on a lot of websites. Yeah, absolutely. Another um, thing that we like to do uh, it, it, when we're talking about your website and its best practices, we like to think about, how you can design for conversion. So at, just as we had Seabreeze with a very specific complex design, sometimes it's just the simple things that are really important to make sure that you are getting the most out of your website. Um, this is Rynell, um, and I believe they're out of Damrascata, correct, Peter? Uh, Booth Bay. Booth Bay, I was close. Um, you know, they, they uh, need to make sure that they have that uh, contact information right up here in the super header and that it's connected. Um, so it's a, it's a tap to call. So whether you're on desktop or mobile, uh, whoever needs to get in touch with right now can easily do it. And it's right here, clear and present on every single page. Dustin, what's the term you use for that again? What's the term we use for that? Uh, the super header. Super so we header. call this, yep. We call this the super header. So it's, it's the, first thing that you see on every single site. Um, and we, you know, depending on where you need information, it's important to have it on the, the left, the right, the right is a very common place to have it because you have it right over your uh, primary navigation. And, and I think the point too here, um, correct me if I'm wrong too, is that, you know, users, when they're on a website, they're going left to right, top to bottom. That's right. Um, so that's why it's so great if you're in an industry where people immediately want to call, want to email you, um, that that information is, is prominent. And I think that's why the team uses super headers a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Here, another super header. This one a little bit more centered, but have all those kind of items here that are uh, the most important first thing for people who are going to pro keys which is a uh, locksmith and automotive key service um, uh, outfit here in the Portland area. And, you know, when we designed this website uh, for the client, not only was the super header really important, but we knew that you know, people who are going to be looking up this service and, and getting on to pro keys, uh, uh, pro keys website, that they really need to know um, everything uh, that's going to per pertain to their current situation. So, you know, we hit them with a strong message of, you know, being in a jam, having a call to action that's a call immediately right off, making sure that if you're freaking out that you just had some sort of incident with the keys in your car and you're not able to get from where you are to where you need to be, it's nice, simple, and tells you exactly what you need to do and what you need to do uh, next to um, uh, to, uh, to, to get in contact with, uh, 
with pro keys themselves. And Dustin, I love how there's, we, you know, I know the logos has this uh, angle in it too, but that's pointing right to that call to action. Yeah. Um, and we call this the jumbotron and um, you know, let me ask you, I mean, I know we have a philosophy and I'll let you elaborate on it of not using sliders. Yes. So we, we, we really think that the most important message should be uh, right here, dead in the center. First thing that you see when you get onto the website, it's the most important action that you want a user to be able to take right off of the bat. Um, because people are, uh, people are in a hurry. People are jumping from site to site. You don't want to bury your point of contact and your most important message somewhere deep inside of your site. You know, and a couple of the other things that we have, and I don't see that we actually have them. I, uh, I think I, I messed up the screen grab. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. Because um, I'm also, looking at this, uh, it's, I messed it up. It's all right. We have like a bit of a cutoff, but um, they do have a uh, live chat um, section, uh, a little bubble in the corner that uh, denotes that you can have a live chat with a representative, which uh, we do recommend if you have the capacity to, um, you know, to have that. Uh, channel of communication open. It's very effective on sites. It's not super difficult to set one of those up. Um, and especially for ProKey, since we know that it is a uh, business that needs immediacy um, and the best contact for, uh, for, for ProKeys is through phone. So we have make sure that the phone number is clear and clickable on every single page uh, for, for users. Another item that we uh, have in our sites, we commonly design to have this uh, involved, is the sidebar menu back here on Seabreeze. This is, uh, uh, I mean, sidebar form. Uh, it's important to have a lot of different points of contact throughout the site, and sidebars are a real nice way to provide information, provide phone numbers, provide socials, uh, Particularly for Seabreeze, we wanted to make sure since the website is split between your commercial and your residential that there's a section here that at any point you're reading through their information and you're like, all right, this is exactly who I need to use uh, for, you know, for my next hardscape project. You know, I need to request a quote right away. It's right here waiting for the user. And I love the way that that's a HubSpot form. It's not native to WordPress, but you guys have styled it you know, in line with the website, that's a nice touch. Yes, exactly. And, and one of the things that we wanted to make sure, you know, when you have a menu in the sidebar, and even when you have, uh, I mean, forms, when you, and you have forms uh, throughout your site, you want to make sure that you are building them around and making them nice and simple for, uh, for users. The more complicated a form gets, the less likely you're going to have somebody fill it out. And still on Seabreeze, the last thing that we have for designing around conversion is just really making sure that you have uh, contact points throughout the site and especially on elements that are gonna be from page to page. So we have a very nice um, designed footer at the bottom of Seabreeze, making sure that you can see the different locations and, um, and, and tapping and being able to see where they are, having email, requesting a quote, um, and then of course having um, their social media icons. So if you want to see some of the work that they've done, you're able to do so right down here at the bottom of the of every single page on the site. Oops. So the go. next thing is, you know, we're going to go a little bit into website performance. It's, it's extremely important. It's, it's often uh, forgotten, but uh, you know, it's the other, you know, half of the story. So here's a report for a recent uh, website. Dustin's team just launched. We put every website through GT metrics. Um, and we recommend you use that tool as well, but just making sure that it's, it's loading extremely fast. Cause Dustin, you know, the thing that we talk about is and tell clients is, Imagine your customers on a camping trip and, you know, maybe for pro keys, for example, right? Yeah. They're on a camping trip and they're, they just locked themselves out of their, their car. 
uh, and they, maybe they don't have good cell phone reception. You know, on a smartphone with on a, a slow network, you know, that is still got to load lightning fast. It's super important for conversions. It's diminishing returns users will drop off um, based off of how long a website uh, loads. Yeah, exactly. And that, that also uh, improves uh, search engine optimization, correct, Peter? Yes, absolutely. So this is the next thing we're going to go into our tips for w website performance. Um, you, st it starts with your host. You know, we said your website's the foundation for your marketing plan. Well, your, your host is, is, is the foundation for performance on your website. So you want to have a, a solid and fast website host. We use the term uh, time to first bite. And that's how long that um, a user requests your website files that it takes for your server to, to start delivering them. So uh, that's the big difference. Uh, or I should say, that's really just one big difference between a good web host and not. We're, we're on Google Cloud Server for all our websites that we host. Um, but, you know, we have some recommendations we'll talk about on the next slide. The next one is just make sure that your website's cached in your server RAM. Uh, I'm not going to get too far into the details, but it's certainly an important one. We're going to talk about a couple tools that will help do this because uh, it, it, it can be technical if you don't use a tool. So, um, what this does is instead of having your website files on some hard drive in a server cloud, it's going to have the, those files um, stored in the actual RAM of that server much closer, much quicker than having to go through uh, a hard drive um, for the actual server. So this is important. We have a whole process around um, how we, de how we de develop websites, how we code websites, but you want to make sure your website is coded extremely well. Dustin, you see a lot of premium themes out there on, on the internet, right? Yes, I do. <laughs> so, you know, premium themes, we, we joke about it sometimes. Those are themes that you buy on online. They're, they're WordPress premium themes. You might buy them on, on theme forest or, or some other, and there, there's, there's some good ones and some bad ones, but they're usually a little bit more bloated than like the custom theme that we have. So, just make sure that your developers coding themes properly um, and have that discussion, you know, have that discussion with them. How are they coding? How are they making sure that their, their websites are coded well um, and they're going to perform well. Um, and any good developer should, you know, also have a conversation with them about how do you comp how they compress code. So Dustin, you know, people will know they can perhaps sometimes compress files on their computer. Well, guess what? You can compress your, your website files and some of the, the plugins we'll talk about after here, um, help with that. Something happened with my video here. I'll, I'll switch. Ooh, I was going to say, looks like the lights went out. Yeah, I'll finish this slide first. Um, so the next one is just ensuring that uh, your code is minified. And when we talk about this, Dustin, it's, you know, code is written uh, for humans to be viewed by humans. But, you know, after it's written, you can get rid of all the stuff humans need, like spaces, uh, between things. So minifying code, it, it gets rid of a lot of that stuff. Um, and then any website we build, we make sure images are compressed because you might take a, a photo with a new iPhone and how large would you say that is, Dustin? Uh, I mean, depending on which way you're facing it, it can be uh, up to a, like 12, it can be anywhere between six and 12 megabytes. Yeah. So what do you think we want to have on a website? On a website, you want to have it more around like 300 and that 300 kilobytes and that's yeah. that's still a little heavy that's that's heavy that's max so there's strategies there's programs we use photoshop google for some tools how to compress uh images for web um it's it has a major impact on speed you know getting you know this is probably the number one number one thing right here is making sure you have smaller images so what lazy loading is is having the website not even um, start loading images until the, view, the viewer has scrolled down to them. So if an image is farther down on the page, there's tools you can use to make sure that it doesn't even load until they get there. And then one last tip, and Dustin, your team has a great program for us uh, about keeping you know the WordPress core, the website updated, keeping individual themes updated, uh, and keeping the, the plugins updated. Yeah, each and every one of them needs the, needs the attention for sure. So, um, Dustin, can you just talk a little bit about uh, the, our hosting recommendations? Uh, our, yes. So, some of the tools that we use here. Yes. Yes. So, um, so some of the tools that we use uh, for website performance. Um, 
you know, uh, you I imagine most of you are, are probably on uh, WordPress. So most of these will uh, apply to you um, for, you know, having a, having a good hosting is, of course, the, the first thing that you really need. Um, and, and some uh, good ones uh, that do a lot of that or that we have here, are like uh, WP Engine, Flywheel. Um, am I missing any, Peter? Well, yeah, and I think, and, and, and thanks for that, I was fixing my camera, but um, uh, yeah, so these are, we're on Google Cloud Server. We definitely have a lot of experience with these. These are the ones that we recommend if you're not gonna work with an agency like ours, if, you're, if you are trying to do it yourself. They're gonna help, um, you know, they have some built-in tools that go over some of the performance things we, we outlined, and they're, they're gonna monitor it. Um, and there's some support uh, for it as well. So, you know, these are, um, they're, they're both fast uh, website servers, uh, website providers. Um, and, you know, they're the two that we recommend. Now, you can also um, add uh, some plugins like WP Rocket and Auto Optimize. We don't use these as much, but Dustin, I did some research. These are two that are, that are um, out there and people really like. So yeah. they're going to help with things like minifying your code, compressing your code, uh, making sure that the website files are cached in the RAM, um, things like that. So there's, they'll have wizards to walk you through it. So I, I don't want you to get uh, too intimidated by, by that. Yeah, nice and simple. So, yeah, Dustin, so, I think you're going to talk about some of the metrics. That's right. So uh, as our third point uh, that we really wanted to go over is it, is that now that you have a lot of these tools, how can you track what uh, you know your conversions on your website? We use Google Analytics. Um, we use the um, uh, sort of the the holy trinity, as Peter likes to call it, of Google, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, and Google Search Console to really have a canvas to be able to track all of the metrics for our clients. Um, but here are really just like itemized things that you should probably keep an eye on um, as you're looking for people that are converting on your site. So uh, a lot of the ones that I've, uh, that I've shown over time here are like measuring your phone calls, your emails, your form submissions, uh, whether they are uh, native to the site or if they're through a third party like HubSpot or, or, or others that are out there. Um, if you have items that, that, are, that are attached to like third party uh, appointment scheduling uh, software, you wanna make sure that you're measuring that. And uh, if you have a live chat on your site, making sure that there is a, uh, a way to track the number of chats initiated um, and your response time to it. If you have more of an e-commerce site, you definitely want to keep track of the number of orders that are placed um, and the percentage of your cart abandonment and um, uh, regardless of whether you have a for-profit business, a nonprofit, it's good to know where you're putting your marketing dollars into and then see like the sources of where all of these leads are coming from. So uh, Google Analytics is a great tool that can show you granularly who is coming from where and how they got there. Um, so it's good to keep an eye on that as you're really taking into account you know, conversions on your site. And then the, the last one, um, just making sure that your page speed is optimal and, and keeping a good eye on that, especially if you are adding more and more content to your site. So just some tools, Dustin manage the Holy Trinity. Um, we recommend using these three, Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, and Google Search Console. Dustin's a, a, a real wizard with Google Tag Manager, but um, using these three allows you to do the tracking Dustin was just talking about, and they're all um, completely free. So at a high level, Google, Google Tag Manager, it's kind of a place where you can organize all these tracking codes. Um, Google Analytics is gonna be where you can actually see uh, performance characteristics of, um, you know, and that's goal tracking, goal conversion tracking. Um, and that's where you can see how many emails you've had, tap to calls, uh, how many form submissions. Google search consoles, it's going to let you know if there are any issues with your website. Because if you have issues with your website errors, um, you know, that certainly is going to uh, lead to less con uh, conversions. Um, yeah. The other two tools is one we have listed here, GT Metrics. 
Um, that is when we showed that report earlier that we run on all our client websites. That's just, uh, it helps you paint a picture of how fast your website is and then any issues with it. So um, definitely check out that tool. I put HubSpot on here. Dustin, you mentioned uh, a client Seabreeze has that. Um, and there are some free versions of it. And it's kind of a great way to collect all this data when you're first starting out. Um, we have our own uh, CRM that we put clients on um, and it helps with lead nurturing. But HubSpot can be, if you're just starting out, it could be a great, a free way to get these leads into a CRM so that they're organized. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, training and support around HubSpot to sort of uh, break the ice and um, get you set up for success for the future. So just something quick on this, and, and we wanted to, we're going to have a webinar on this um, soon. It's great to, you know, after you convert the lead, that's just, as, that's, you know, oftentimes where people fail more than, you know, getting the conversion is what you do after. So um, there are automated tools um, like HubSpot, uh, the, the CRM and, and lead automation software that we use um, and that we're experts in and can and help clients with. But you want to make sure that you at least are, you know, after there's a submission, notifying the, the user that you received it, um, potentially doing an email welcome series, which is a series of automated emails the user will get that um, talk about, you know, your differentiator, um, talk about your company and, and, and your messaging that you want to put out there. Um, so I also just wanted to say, I think it's very useful. We talked about this with HubSpot when contacts go in, think about setting up some sort of pipeline um, some sort of, um, it's also sometimes called opportunity, uh, opportunities in, in CRMs that you can um, put leads in and then sort, how, you know, however your sales cycle is. Um, maybe it's, you know, they pop in from a Facebook lead and that's, that's one stage of your pipeline. And then they go into estimate sent, uh, you know, meeting scheduled. So you can really kind of organize where your leads are uh, in the pipeline that way. And I think when all else fails, you know, where people fall is, is, is again in that follow up. So even that manual follow up, sending the email, calling on the phone, uh, very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one thing that just to sort of, as we wrap everything up here uh, to keep in mind, we've talked a lot about um, your website and uh, its ability to convert but you should also keep a good eye on the metrics outside of your website and your offsite conversions. Um, having metrics that you're trying to meet on social media, on, on Google My Business, on all these different platforms, because a lot of your traffic will be coming from here and, you know, and, and really be sourced and qualified first, you know, through your, through these different channels before they even reach your website. So um, it's good to keep an eye on uh, where your sources are from Google Analytics. And the more you look at that, the more you'll see how much your comprehensive strategy has to be around all the different ways people can easily get to your website online and social media, Google My Business, you know, uh, all these other different option, uh, options and platforms out there are, are key to making this all work. And I think that uh, um, really wraps things up. And if you have any questions, we're trying to keep this kind of brief. Um, but if you have any questions, there's our email, peter at ananiabailey.com, Dustin with a Y at ananiabailey.com. Um, you know, set up a strategy session. There's no cost to that. And, you know, that's kind of where we can um, talk to you and, and connect with you and talk about your marketing plan, your goals, and, and, and give any uh, feedback that we might have. Um, Cause like we said in the beginning, we're really here to empower you, whether you work with us or not. Um, you know, that's kind of, that's really what drives us. So um, thanks so much for joining us. Just make sure to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, and, you know, thank you so much for, for watching. Yep. Thanks for coming by. All right. Bye everybody.